Some of you might have been surprised that last season the Atlantic ended up with no storms getting retired. Well, that was the uh, decision from the World Meteorological Organization earlier in the month. And uh, Idalia, of course, being the strongest uh, US landfalling storm that season, a Category 3. Will we see more of the same this year? Well, that's our job to find out whether it is with our season predictions. Now, our April prediction is our first one that we do in the year well ahead of the actual hurricane season. Well, I say it's well ahead, it's still only about five weeks away until we kick off uh, in June. But the main thing we look out for here is to see what trends are developing, and one trend that we certainly are seeing developing is warm sea surface temperatures across the Atlantic and high oceanic heat content. That alone is not enough to really go all out with a prediction. Um, other conditions have to line up in advance and when the storms are actually there themselves. However, this is what our prediction looks like for 2024 in the Atlantic. We are currently looking at 21 named storms, 12 hurricanes and 4 major hurricanes this year. So latest trends are indicating conditions particularly favourable for hurricanes uh, in the main development region and Caribbean region this year. Those are the hot spots that we're looking at and also into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, our main takeaway key messages here, August and October expected to be the superior months for the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, with the Western Atlantic Ocean and the main development region being the most prominent during the peak month of September. Now, we are seeing suggestions of long-tracking, dangerous hurricanes, uh, a primary concern with a 45% chance of seeing a Category 5 storm somewhere in the basin. Of course, we saw one last year, Hurricane Lee, uh, it didn't strike at that intensity, thankfully. And a 20% chance, though, of seeing a Category 5 landfall somewhere in the basin this year. The highest risk areas for particularly strong landfalls are the northern Yucatan Peninsula, massive climatological indicators on that one this year, as well as the Lucayan Archipelago, which is the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, and also South Florida. Uh, a lot of um, activity on climatological uh, turnouts there for South Florida, uh, with a lot of red flags popping up there. Of course, climatology isn't the be-all and end-all. We've factored that in, in our predictions for April. Um, and so the main difference really with the climatology and the actual uh, modeling right now is maybe a little bit of a further north emphasis for activity. And we'll get on to that in a minute though. Um, also in our key messages, with high oceanic heat content uh, and sea surface temperatures, conditions could support rapidly developing and high numbers of storms in the main development region throughout the season, all the way through. There also appears to be a high early season potential in the northern Gulf of Mexico this year, so homegrown storms are forming the northern half of the Gulf, off the Gulf Coast, and moving in quite quickly uh, affecting those land areas. In summary, now these numbers are just estimates, it's not really a, uh, you know, I, I, we don't expect that it's going to be completely how this goes, but at the moment it's showing one storm for May, two for June, three for July, five in August, five in September, three in October, two in November, and zero in December. And if we look at the actual analogues for this season, well, we've got quite a raft of them, actually. A huge amount of analogues for this season, some better than others. Let's start with the best analogues right now. And this is mainly based on climatological patterns, um, where we are in the phase of play with the ENSO, uh, leaving the El Nino, and looks like we'll be entering some form of La Nina this season. Uh, so that really puts a few seasons right up near the top there. And these are the three that we've marked right now for the highest uh, match. Uh, there's no, no such thing as a perfect match, of course, and every season is different. But the biggest matches right now are 1998, which of course was quite an active season, featured some very strong storms, the two most notable ones being um, George's, which was a very strong Category 4, Borderline Cat 5 if you ask me, and Mitch, which was a Category 5 storm, uh, which uh, devastated Honduras in late October. Another one is 1966, 
Uh, another season, people might not know so much about that one, but most people will remember its strongest storm, recently upgraded actually, Hurricane Inez, uh, which is a Category 5 and had a very erratic track uh, through, I think, September of that year. And the other one that's a good, a great match right now is 1933, which is uh, one that will really uh, throw up the uh, listening ears of... Uh, People who know their history because that was a very busy season and had a very many strong storms that season as well, 1933. A few other good analogues, including some fairly recent ones, 2010, which was quite a busy year for the Atlantic and quite everywhere else. 2007, which really building onto that long tracking intense storm theme there, Dean and Felix of course both reaching category 5 and obviously one of them uh, making landfall, uh, Dean that is, in on the Yucatan Peninsula, was certainly worried about something like that this year. Another one that had, um, uh, well actually 2005 is up there as a good analogue as well, I mean that's just one of the insane seasons but certainly people are sounding some alarm bells that this season could be very busy. We're not going to go that far to suggest that it is going to be like that just yet but as we said at the moment 21 named storms is our prediction. And if you look at the actual track forecasts, or the uh, likely tracks, I mean, this is just an example of what we could possibly see. Um, one or two tracks uh, going straight through the Caribbean Sea, and then through the Yucatan, and then probably through towards central Mexico. Uh, the climatological modelling suggests that ones that move through there may not get that far north, and the ones that do uh, are homegrown. Certainly, the potential for a track somewhat similar to Irma, uh, a storm that forms in the main development region, moves through the northern Leeward Islands and then through the Bahamas and then maybe into South Florida as a potentially strong storm. Don't want to cause any uh, unnecessary concern there, but that is a possibility, obviously never certain. And then you've got a more um, sedate recurvature pattern Quite a few storms we expect will be recurving uh, quite far to the west, certainly a westward bias in this season it would seem. And that also plays into uh, some potential threat for the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is also an anomaly this year for a uh, high chance of at least storm conditions somewhere along North Carolina coastline. And also can't really rule out the risk for Atlantic Canada as well. Uh, quite a few uh, climatological um, analogues throwing up storms that affected those areas. Uh, can't really call that one. We don't have any strong signals for or against, but certainly what I've said about the Caribbean Sea in particular, central to northern Caribbean Sea, maybe not so much the southern part, um, and then also the Gulf of Mexico in general, especially central and northern parts, look like they're going to be key this season. Um, and as we've looked at the months there, it could well be that the peak of the season might be in August, uh, maybe in September, um, but it certainly looks like it's going to be loaded more towards the earlier part of the season than the late part of the season, it would seem. As for any May storms, of course, looking more towards the short term, uh, I suggest that if we do get a May storm, it might be one somewhere near the Florida Peninsula, either on the Gulf of Mexico or on the Atlantic side, that doesn't last particularly long, probably not too strong tropical storm or maybe a Category 1 hurricane, and then probably affecting the southeastern United States in one way or another before recurving off to the northeast. That's just a suggestion. We'll have to wait and see what happens as the situation gets closer. Of course, in the Atlantic today, there's nothing to track right now. There are two little systems, extra tropical, that some people are getting excited about. But I can assure you, there's no real indication that they're going to become nameable in any way, shape or form. And certainly in the next couple of weeks, it doesn't look like we're going to see any real activity for the Atlantic. And of course, it is still very early on. The season doesn't officially start until June the 1st.